Welcome back to Fish Like Us. Today's video is about a method I've come up with using stuff that was laying around to make sure that my bait stays alive a whole lot longer. So what happened here was I had this old sun visor. It's a foam padded, you know, it's, it's kind of a foam and it's mylar on the outside. Well, what happened was I had this laying around out in my garage and I always thought to myself, well, I'd use it for something because we ended up getting a newer one or a better one. And, uh, and then isn't that funny how we do that? We just hold on to stuff. Well, in our method of madness around here, fish like us, we're real big on dual purpose. So if something in our life doesn't meet a purpose to service two different things, it usually gets eliminated in the uh, I don't need it pile. Well, I came up with an idea to wrap that visor material around my bait bucket and the result was exactly what I wanted. It, my, the water stays cooler and insulated a whole lot longer. So you're gonna need a couple of tools, okay? First tool you're gonna need, duct tape. Fisherman's best friend, especially if you have a kayak, get yourself some duct tape. It's amazing how creative our brains will get when we have a little bit of duct tape and we use it uh, to solve a problem that we might arise in. Got a fishing pail, you can do use a bucket. This is the other half of the uh, sun visor, the shade visor that went into the car. I've got half of it because half of it's left over from doing the big bucket. Originally this thing was five bucks. Okay, five bucks is a really nice price for saving a dozen of shrimp that de went dead in your, in your bucket because it got too hot. And stay tuned towards the end of the video because I'm going to show you an extra special trick uh, to help those shrimp or live fish or whatever you got stay alive just a little bit longer. So let's get to the build. It's pretty simple. First thing I like to do is just set it down on the ground. See, I have somewhat of a straight flat edge here from the last time I made a cut. And this stuff doesn't have to be perfect. So I put it down there like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get our duct tape and a pair of scissors. I'm holding it really tight up against the, uh, the bucket because the bucket tapers down. And so pull it out nice and taut. Uh, get yourself a piece of duct tape ready. I find that it works better if you lay it down firm so you can really pull at it and just kind of eyeball the where that mylar is going to wrap and then give yourself a first connection of the tape just like that i can still trim that tape up as long as i don't stick the whole thing down immediately because this first bit of tape all this first bit of tape is doing is holding the mylar foam up against the bucket so i can really wrap it tight Immediately, I find out where my notches are gonna need to be, right? So you can see how, if I wanna keep this flush, I'm gonna have to make a notch right there, which is great, because all I have to do is just pull out a couple of snips and just make a little notch for that so, so it won't... I need better scissors. Jeez Louise. Okay, like that, right? And around, oh, see, bang, found my other notch. So let's take that out. So leave a little bit of space right here uh, so our duct tape can go on that. But I've got it nice and firm up against there. And now I'm just gonna take one more piece of holder tape to hold that mylar up against itself. So now it's tightly wrapped around that bucket. Now we're gonna take tape and we're gonna go around this seam right here to really make sure that it gets sealed up to the point where moisture has a real hard time breaching the duct tape. <laughs> I went 
along with my finger and really pressed all that tape down in there to make sure that it's got a nice bond to the bucket and to this. Uh, handle still moves. It's important to make a notch in that duct tape as well so you can still get your handle to move. And we're just going to cut around the bucket at the base, right? <laughs> Voila, as they say in France, that is a fishing bait bucket with a new set of pants. So now one last thing to finish it up. Here I do on the bottom, I take that same duct tape and I'm gonna seal the bottom like this. Yes. <laughs> keep your fish or your shrimp alive a lot longer particularly if you use an aerator don't forget your aerators and change the batteries in your aerators and make sure you use that product that I do on my aerators to keep them alive a whole lot longer see this video right here this is where you do a nice little trick called chill out you'll grab a freeze pack or one of those blue ice blocks or something like that and you'll put it inside the bait bucket with your water. And that's gonna cool it way down, way down. And that has a couple of advantages as a matter of fact. One, whatever's inside there, whether it's shrimp or, or live bait, greenbacks or pinfish, whatever you got, it's gonna use less oxygen because the water's gonna be cooled down, their body temperature's gonna slow down, everybody's gonna slow down in there. Now, if you're like me, and remember I like to dual purpose stuff, I freeze a bottle of water and then take it and put it right in that bait bucket. So I'm always gonna stay hydrated and that's a dual purpose ice block that you froze. That if, when it thaws out, now you got a fresh cold drink. What do you think? You guys do something to insulate your bait buckets? Drop a comment, let me know. Have a little courage, achieve something new. I believe in you. Hey, thanks for watching guys. I'm Captain Eric. I'm Chief Mate Janelle. We're fish like us. We're the only two who work here. We package it, we polish it. If you like it, press like. Oh yeah, okay, that's what we gotta talk about.